Good morning, everybody, and welcome to another edition of What's Up with yours truly, Dr. A. Nathan Young. Listen, it's been a year already since we started this journey, and I just want to thank you for your support, for your love, and for tuning in every week to hear what God has to say to our hearts. We're about to go into another one of our services, and I hope that you're blessed by it. I hope that God meets you right where you are and that he says something to change your life. Meet me right back here in 26 minutes. Can't wait to see you. If you're joining us by TV, welcome to the Faith Bible Church broadcast. Um, I am substituting today for Pastor A. Nathan Young. I am uh, Bishop Alfred Young, Jr. And I want to say to all of you who are tuning in today, I would encourage you to join me as a ministry partner in this broadcast. And uh, I'm a partner, which means I help to make sure this broadcast can come to you every Sunday. And I would encourage you. What am I saying? The gospel is free, but it costs money to get it out. So I encourage you to uh, write to the church and give a generous donation if you're being blessed by this broadcast. Thank you so much. All right, our uh, message today is bloopers, when life doesn't go as planned. I want to address a major blooper in the lives of people, and that is the family blooper, where many people have embraced lies, untruths, falsehoods, old wives' tales and myths that they have believe in their families. And it's ruining their families. It's destabilizing families. It's causing uh, poverty where there ought to be prosperity. Causing disunity where there ought to be unity. Causing confusion where there ought to be clarity. Causing anger and disruptedness and confusion where God wants things clear. So let me give us this verse. Don't let anyone capture you with empty philosophies and high-sounding nonsense that come from human thinking and from the spiritual powers of this world rather than from Christ. What's the Bible saying? The Bible is saying if we aren't careful, there are some lies that we buy, some empty philosophy and some high-sounding nonsense that we take into our lives and then it messes up our lives, creates a major blooper. This past weekend, I took my granddaughter to the movie. Not a real big movie guy, but she had been out of school and I was bored, so I'm gonna be a good papa, took her to the movie. On the way to the movie, I called her a dummy. (laughs) Yes, I did. And then she said, why you call me a dummy? I said, because you're ignorant. (laughs) Yes, I did. She said, well, what does it mean to be ignorant? I said, it means you don't know. She said, oh, I know it doesn't. I gave her my iPad and told her to look it up. Guess what ignorant means? Simply that you don't what? No. I said, now let me prove to you that you're a dummy. I said, what is the square root of quantum physics downloaded to the 10th power degree? She said, what? I said, what is the square root in quantum physics powered down to the 10th degree? She said, I don't know. She said, Papa, you smart. Oh, you smart. Guess what I just gave her? Bunch of high sounding nonsense. (laughs) But she believed it. Let me ask you. What high-sounding nonsense have you believed? Nonsense like, you know, you can love somebody and not be in love. Nonsense like people have accepted that maybe they need a divorce because they aren't getting along because the kids are living in a toxic environment so they probably be better off for the kids. Nonsense. Anybody you're involved with, you gotta learn to get along with them. Can I get an amen? amen? But we swallowed a lot of nonsense. Nonsense. Now, here's one. You committed to having a strong family. That's nonsense. I told my church, I'm not interested in you having a strong family. 
not going to work to help you, don't want anything to do with a strong family. A lot of you, your family is messed up because your goal is a strong family. You've been blooped. Sounds good. Sound right. But it's not. There are tons of strong families in the world today who are confused about the gender. A lot of strong families where folk don't know what they are. A lot of strong families where people don't understand and they are role neutral. The man doesn't know his role, the wife doesn't know her role, the kids don't know their role, but they're working on being a strong family. You see, you can be a strong family and be confused. You can be a strong family and be frustrated. You can be a strong family and never, ever, ever get along. I'm not interested in a strong family. Because a lot of strong families today, amen, they just, folk don't even know what gender they are. Here's what you need to be. A strong biblical family. That needs to be your goal. Because strong biblical families are clear. Strong biblical families are specific about their roles. Strong biblical families are God-honoring, Christ-pleasing. Strong biblical families are powerful, they're successful, and they are families that God can bless. You need to be a strong biblical family. Don't buy this strong family garbage and put all of your strength into having a strong family. No, put your energy and strength into being and having a strong biblical family. Now watch this. Let me prove it. Didn't the Lord make you one with your wife? In body and spirit, you are his. What's the Bible say? God took a man. God took a woman. God took a husband. God took a wife. And he made them one. That's the foundation for a family. Now watch this. And what does he want? Y'all see that in the verse? It say God took a man and a woman and he wants something. You ever thought about that? You ever thought about in your family what does God want? You see, that's the unanswered, unconsidered question. What does God want? The man knows what he wants, the woman knows what she wants. Together, they might know what they want, but rarely do they ask, what does God want? Why did God make this family? Why did God give us children? Why did God put us together? God wants something. He said, I did it, I own it, I made it. I want something. Here's what he says. Godly children from your union. What's he saying? I want something. I want the family to be biblical. I want the family to be godly. I didn't put you together just so you could earn a living, stay healthy, be nice and be good. I want something, God says. I want godly children. I want a biblical family. That's what I want. Have you ever considered what does God want? Strong, biblical family. What's he saying? In your family, you're committing a blooper if pleasing the Lord is not the goal of the family. In your family, for God to bless it, for God to honor it, for God to, to, to make it what you want it to be and what he wants it to be, you have to have a commitment to a biblical family. The Bible says this, so guard your heart, remain loyal to the wife of your youth. Amen. Pleasing the Lord is the goal. Whole lot of folk divorcing and walking away from each other. Messing up the family. Why? Because of their goals. They feel like they, didn't get, they aren't getting what they want to get. God say, what about what I want? I love it when the Saints won the Super Bowl. 
And then immediately they started breaking up the team. To me, that was crazy. Here you just won the Super Bowl, and the people who won the Super Bowl, you start breaking them up. Got rid of Shockey. I liked him. A few years later, they get rid of Jimmy Graham. Got rid of Colston. Just breaking it all up. You know what I want to tell them? Y'all stupid. <laughs> but guess what I realized? It's not my team. No matter what I think about it, it's not my team. It's not your family. It's God's family. He can do with it what he wants. He has his own goals. He has his own agenda. Have you considered what God wants? If I had gone over there, if I could have got in and told Tom Benson, I don't like what you're doing with the team. What would his response have been? Well, I'm not gonna even say hallelujah. <laughs> a husband should love his wife as much as Christ loved the church and gave his life for it. What's he saying? In a bi biblical family, a husband loves his wife. In what way? Like Christ loved the church. What did Christ do? He sacrificed. Husbands, if you are not sacrificing for your wife, then you are not having and going towards a biblical family. I understand. You know, I was asleep in that good sweet spot. Y'all know what I'm talking about. You get right, right, get that pillow right, get that bed warm, the cover in the right spot. You know, you're getting ready, you got it, you're getting ready to, for me, go off into that coma, hallelujah. <laughs> Do y'all know Marie had the audacity just when I got it right and that sleep was coming down? She said, Alfred, I don't feel good. Would you go to the kitchen and get me some water? <laughs> oh, Lord, have mercy. No, you didn't. Guess what started going through my mind? I pay all the bills. I buy you a car. I give you health insurance. You got life insurance. Hey man, you got some spending chains. Listen, I'm doing everything I could do, and now you got to make me go get some water too? <laughs> Holy Spirit say, so what you supposed to get a trophy for doing what you're supposed to do? You're supposed to take care of her. You're supposed to meet her need. So now you want an Academy Award for that? Go get the water. The car, the house, the money, the insurance, none of those were sacrifices. Guess what was a sacrifice? Go get the water. Brothers, does your wife know that you were sacrificed for her? The Bible says a husband should love his wife as much as Christ loved the church and gave his life for it. What did he do? Sacrifice. Sacrifice. The Bible says this. In the same way, a husband should love his wife as much as he loves himself. A husband who loves his wife shows that he loves himself. What's it saying? God tied all of a man's blessings to how he treated his wife. The Bible says in 1 Peter that God won't even hear a man's prayers who doesn't treat his wife right. What's the blooper? The world say take care of you. God say take care of your wife. Wise, buckle up. For wise, this means submit to your husband as to the Lord. As the church submits to Christ, so you wives should submit to your husbands in everything. The ugly word, submit. Women don't even want to hear the word. And part of the reason they don't want to hear what the Bible says about submission is they don't know what biblical submission is. They think biblical submission is that you become somebody's doormat, somebody's, uh, somebody ignorant, without a brain, and all that foolishness that the devil so. No, that's not what it's talking about. Matter of fact, my wife Marie has the best definition for a woman who submits to her husband. Submission here simply means that she makes the one responsible who God made responsible. 
That's all it means. So her term for submission is dump truck. She said, I submit to my husband. Here's what I do. A problem come in the house, dump it on him. <laughs> I need some money, dump it on him. Kids giving me trouble, dump it on him. Yeah. Now watch this right. Women are so opposed to being biblical women that my pastor has given up on this word submission. This is what he says now. Women, since you won't submit, would you just please cooperate? <laughs> Amen. <laughs> and a lot of women won't even cooperate. Why? They swallow this high-sounding nonsense. This nonsense that tells them to be strong, independent women. You can't be independent in a relationship. You bought a lie. A big lie. And that's why women are paying. You know men won't hardly stand up and let women get a seat now. They letting them be independent. You know, when men meet women now, hey amen, they used to ask them for their phone number first. Now they ask them where you work. <laughs> you lost because of this nonsense. You don't need to be independent. You need to be a partner. A partner. Let somebody love you and take care of you. Hey Amen. Ain't nobody going to mess up Marie's independence. Her independence lets her get up when she get ready. Go shopping and do stuff. Biblical. God laid it out. Watch this. Y'all ready? A wife should put her husband first. That means before the kids. That means before your mama. That means before your friends. That means when it comes to taking care of him and paying attention to him and listening to him and serving him and making sure he knows who's the top priority, God say, women, wives, put your husband first. Let me give you a simple way. When the man come in, and you're on the phone with your, with your friend, and you got a three-way with your friend and your mama, get off the phone. Hang up on the good, the bad, and the ugly. <laughs> Tell them, girl, my husband just came in. Now watch this, right? Let me tell you how silly it is. The women who hanging on the phone, usually talking to folk who don't have no man. They don't have no husband. And you're afraid to tell them, your husband just came home, you're going to take care of your man. Amen. A wife should put her husband, what? First. What? First. Biblical family. First, children, you belong to the Lord and you do the right thing when you obey your parents. The first commandment with a promise says, obey your father and your mother and you will have a long and happy life. Husbands, love by sacrifice. Wives, put the husband first. Children, biblical family, obey. Obey your parents. Now, Back in my day, with my mama, she's sitting right here. They, my generation, the parents didn't even need the Bible to tell you to obey if you wanted a long life. Because if you disrespected and dishonored and disobeyed them, they would kill you themselves. <laughs> Hallelujah. God didn't have to do it. <laughs> amen. You know how many times, amen, parents would take back, if you, I will take you out. <laughs> how many folk heard this? I bought you in the world and I'll take you out. That's what I'm talking about. Now y'all want to negotiate obedience. Be friends. That's that world garbage. I'm not your friend. I'm your daddy. 
I'm not your friend. I'm your mama. Biblical family. The Bible says this. Get rid of all bitterness, rage, anger, harsh words, and slander, as well as all types of evil behavior. Where? In the family. In the family. Families that don't speak to each other. Families that's holding on to grudges. Instead, be kind to each other. Kindness in the home. What is it? It's a choice to be biblical. Tenderhearted, forgiving one another, just as God through Christ has forgiven you. What's he saying? Home ought to be a sanctuary. The family ought to be a refuge. But it's not automatic. You got to live in a state of continual forgiveness because you are living with people who are flawed and you are flawed also. So happiness in the family is a choice. How do you do it? Here it is. Don't be drunk with wine because that will ruin your life. Instead, be filled with the Holy Spirit. Before the word of God talks about the role of the husband, the role of the wife, the role of the children. In the same passage in Ephesians, before he talks about any of that, he talks about being filled with the spirit. Why? Because it takes a spirit-filled life to be a biblical family. Now let me prove it. Anybody in here you ever been drunk? Let me see your hand. The TV can't see you. Amen. Y'all notice I didn't raise my hand, huh? Because before Jesus, B.C., before Christ, I, was, I, I didn't fool much with drunk, but I kind of got high. <laughs> <laughs> Don't be clapping. <laughs> uh, that's this, right? When you were drunk, what did the alcohol control? How you talk? How you walk, how you drove, everything. It amazed me all of the weak guys who would take a drink and get courage and want to fight. <laughs> Y'all know what I'm talking about, amen? Give them a shot of uh, uh, Thunderbird, they want to fight. <laughs> the, the alcohol control what? Everything. So what's the Bible saying? In order to have a strong biblical family, you got to make a decision to come to a place where you let the Holy Spirit control you. Because before you get selfish in the family, guess what the Holy Spirit is saying? Don't do that. Before you go off, guess what the Holy Spirit is saying? Don't do that. Before you hold a grudge, before you start pouting, before you start acting crazy, guess what the Holy Spirit tells you? Don't do that. How do you have a strong biblical family? Tap into the power of the Holy Spirit. Listen to his inner voice. We just built a new house and thank God for it. And uh, I put uh, some motion detectors in the house. Put one in the pantry. <laughs> I did. Put one in the master ba bathroom and I put one in the utility room. Because my wife has a habit in the pantry, in the master bath, and in the utility room, leaving the lights on. So now, when she goes in there, guess what the light does? Click, comes on. When she leaves out, in a couple of minutes, guess what it does? Click, goes off. Great, hallelujah. Got rid of that argument, amen. Now I'm thinking about putting one in her closet. <laughs> Now watch this. The power to turn the light on. The power for the light is there all the time. The motion detector just signals it to use the power that's already there and come on. She has to do something for the light to come on, although the power is there. In your marriage, the power of the Holy Spirit is there to change your marriage, to
to bless your family, to give you wisdom with your kids, to move you from poverty to prosperity. The power is there to make you content in the relationship with the person you picked. It amazes me how frustrated we can be with folk we picked. <laughs> well, he ain't no good. You picked him. She won't want, don't want to do right. You picked her. The power to make it all biblical and wonderful the way God wants it and the way you want it too. The power is there. You just got to do something. You got to make a choice. God's way, not my way. And I pray that the word of God bless you. I pray that it met you right where you are. I pray that as you go throughout the week, that you're reminded of what God said to you this morning. Don't forget, we rely on your support in order to sustain this broadcast. So visit us at myfaithbible.org and click on the giving tab and TV ministry to support this ministry. I cannot wait to see you in one of our services. We're at 1148 North Columbia Street every Sunday morning at 745 and 1045 a.m. Or you can catch us in Slidell at 57209 Allen Road at 9 a.m. Again, that's every Sunday morning. When you're in the area, drop by and visit with us. God bless you. See you right back here, same time next week.